Today, I'm gonna be talking about five Garmin EchoMap UHD tips that you need to know the next time that you're out on the water. A lot of these will help your quality of life whenever you're out fishing and will make working the fish finder a lot easier. I previously did a video talking about five tips for the Garmin fish finder and you guys seem to really like it so I decided that I would make another one and these five tips will help you a lot whenever you're out on the water. I currently have it in simulation mode because I am currently in the garage here. This isn't actually happening in real time. This is just a simulation so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about but we're just going to dive right on into it today and we're going to get started with tip number one. The first thing I want to talk about that is very important whenever you're using a fish finder, it can be any fish finder, it doesn't have to just be Garmin, but the one thing that you really need to know is how to determine what the bottom is. Depend on what your transducer returns will help you determine exactly what the bottom composition is. So for example, you can tell that this is a very heavy return based on the color, so this would be a hard bottom. And whenever you're on a lake where it doesn't have a hard bottom, like a soft bottom, like maybe like clay, or anything along that line that doesn't generate as high of a return, it will be a lot less bright and vibrant, and you will not get as much of a return back. This can be really useful to determine exactly what you need to throw to target the fish. So for example, if you're in a hard bottom with rocks, you might want to throw a jig. This will help you a lot whenever you're out on the water. So make sure you keep this in mind. The second tip I'm going to talk about today is how to lock the touch screen on your fish finder. This can be very useful if you don't want anybody to get in and mess with your settings or you know anything really like that. It can be anything where you just want to lock up your screen. And how you do that is you hit the power button right up here, just hit it once and you go to display and then lock touch screen you see i could tap on it all i want nothing's going to change and this can be useful if you're going to be running the same thing and you don't want to like bump into it or something or really anything like that this is whenever this is useful and if you want to unlock it all you have to do is just hit the power button right here with just one time and your screen's unlocked and this can be really useful depending on the situation that you're in. So it's a nice little thing to keep in mind. The third tip that I want to talk about today is how to change the color scheme on your fish finder. Currently I have it set to yellow right here, but you can change it and depending on what your preference is will determine exactly what you want it to look like. And some are definitely better than others at spotting fish. So how you do that is you go into menu and then you go into sonar setup and then you go to appearance and then right here is where you click color scheme and see I can change it to blue I have it on yellow personally classic blue classic white and black maroon red and green orange red green and gray. Personally, I like green a lot, but I also really, really like yellow. Yellow is just my favorite one to go with personally, so that's the one that I use most of the time. Now, you can change it depending on however you want, so it really does come down to personal preference, but for me at least, I really like it on yellow. I feel like I can see the fish pretty well, like right here, and it really does help to determine where the fish are at and what you're looking at on the fish finder. So this can be really useful, and for example, if you have the Garmin Live Scope, you can change the color scheme on it too, and it will help you see the fish a lot better sometimes. It just really depends on what you can see better and what works best for you, so. Keep this in mind next time you're out on the water and just kind of go mess around with it and see what you think. The fourth tip I'm going to talk about today is how to record your screen on your fish finder. This can be very useful, especially if you want to go back and review and kind of see what you've like seen during the day. Or if you have like a YouTube channel, I mean this can be very useful. I honestly, I need to start doing this. But you don't have to have a YouTube for this to be beneficial. It would be very beneficial, especially if you're trying to learn an area real well this would be a good way to do it because you can always go back and review why you caught fish that day or where they were at and it's just very very useful so the first thing that is the most important or this will not work 
and I cannot stress this enough, you need to put a micro SD card into your fish finder or you will not be able to record it because it will have nowhere to store it at. So if you didn't know, it is right here. This is where you put it in and you just pull it down and right here, I already have one in, but you just close that back. To record your screen, all you do is hit menu right here and then record sonar. Then you'll have the little record button right here in the bottom corner and it'll store it to the memory card. This does not work in simulation mode, so that's why you don't see it right here. You don't see anything. But if I want to go and turn that off, I just hit stop recording right here. And then I can edit the name, depending on what I want to call it. I'll just call it that and that's that. But if I want to delete it, I can just hit right here, delete. And that's that. Recording your screen can be very useful depending on what exactly you want to record your screen for, but just keep it in mind that this does not work in simulator mode. I don't see a need why you would have to record your screen in simulator mode, of course, but if you're out on the water, it shouldn't be an issue. And just remember to put your micro SD card in here, and it has to be 32 gigabytes or smaller. So, Keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's what I read online at least, so keep that in mind. The fifth tip I'm gonna talk about today is the black light and the color mode on here. And this is often overlooked by many people who own a Garmin fish finder, and it's a really useful feature to know. So you just hit the power button right here. You go to display. Then you have black light. This can be really useful in the morning, but I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is in simulation mode, of course, so it says I'm down in Florida, but obviously I'm not. It's pretty cold outside. But you hit black light right here. See, it dims it. So this can be really useful in like the morning if you don't want your screen to be as bright. That's how you do that. And then if you wanna change your color mode, Whenever it becomes daytime or nighttime, your fish finder will go between the two of them. So day colors is during the day, and night colors is during the night, of course. So if you hit day colors, see how it's brighter. And if I hit night colors, it's darker. So this can be a useful feature. It's just something nice to know. But I keep it on auto, and it'll change with the time of day. So if it's at sunset, it'll change to dark mode. But depending on which one you like better, personally, I like the night mode better a lot more. So it's really up to you. But I keep mine in auto just so I know whenever sunset and everything is. But you can also tell just by, you know, looking at the sun and everything. But this is a really useful feature to know. And it's just another way you can customize your unit. These are my five Garmin fish finder tips that I thought that you guys should know. I decided to do another video like this because you guys seem to really like it. And it's a good way to just know your unit better and to better operate it whenever you're out on the water. These tips will help you a lot whenever you're out fishing, especially that recording one. These are some very niche settings, but they will be very useful to you depending on the situation that you're in. If you want to see another video like this, let me know in the comment section down below. I do plan on making one talking about wide scope features, so if that interests you, make sure you comment down below. If you want to check out another video where I talk about five other tips on the Garmin Fish Finder, I will have it linked here so you can check it out. And if you want to check out the one going more kind of in depth on some of the features, I'll also have it linked there. So I really do appreciate y'all watching today. It really does mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next video.